Tay McRae is a 20 year old artist from Canada. And the song that we're talking about today, which is in this listing itself, You Broke Me First. And this was the song that really just took her to the next level. She released a few songs before this that have now accumulated some in the nine figure streams on Spotify. But this one released in peak quarantine this is the one that really set the tone for her climb to the top of the charts now has over 1.3 billion streams on Spotify today and actually reached number 17 on the Billboard charts. This song is an emotional ballad, so it's a very relatable topic for her young female audience. The music video itself, you have to check it out. It's really cool. It was shot all on her iPhone. She literally taped it to the back of her mom's car and someone drove her mom's car in reverse while she was literally just walking behind it. But this was during the middle of quarantine when no one could shoot big videos. She wasn't even signed to a record label yet. She got all this done by herself, super self-resourceful. Like I said, 1.3 billion streams on Spotify, hundreds of millions on other platforms, most likely reached its bottom in the streaming earnings in the past you know, six months or so. It's still going viral on TikTok. Now, Drew, you were saying that this song's about reached its, its valley of earnings um, since it's reached its peak. You're right. When we look at the financials quarter over quarter, year over year, we see the steady decline. We see the earnings shift from radio to streaming more. Again, exactly what we'd expect to happen with the catalog. Uh, and just in the most recent three quarters, we're beginning to see the up and down movement and fluctuations in earnings rather than a, a pure down shift. Uh, and that's when we start to determine whether or not we're in the quote unquote tail of the royalty earnings. Is when we start to see stable earnings period over period. Now, that's a great place to be at the acquisition point for a catalog, especially knowing what's going on, A, in the world as it relates to streaming, and B, in the world as it relates to the artist, right? So first, streaming, right? As everyone knows, streaming's growing. Spotify is getting into more and more people's hands. More people are getting smartphones, getting better access to music listening, which is how royalties are created. Just looking at some of the you know activity across the board on different platforms the past few months. From June to August 2023, I really think that is when it sort of hit its bottom across different platforms. Shazam's hit its bottom in February of 2023. Genius profile visits for the actual lyrics of the song hit its bottom in August. Monthly Spotify streams hit its bottom in July. And it's seen a monthly uptick of 37% from last month to August. She has over 12 million followers across social media, showing it's deeper than just fans appreciating one song specifically, they're really in it for the artist herself and want to continue to be a part of the rise of her entire career. They're not just in it for one hit song, they're in it for her. And because she's been this big online presence for so many years, back to her dance days where she literally has dance competition videos from when she was eight years old on her YouTube channel. She was actually went to school at eight years old at one of the most prestigious ballet schools in the whole country of Canada. She was doing YouTube since like a very young kid. So she grew up with her audience, which helped establish her when she started putting on music. She was actually in the show, you Th So You Think You Can Dance back in 2017, earning a third place finish. And she first dropped her first original song on her YouTube channel and it racked up 40 million views in a short time period, which just set her on this remarkable trajectory. She has this more authentic one-to-one -one connection with fans that a lot of other artists do. And because of this, they have this nostalgia factor with all the music that she's released, which will, you know, create lasting memories for the lifetime of a fan. And fans will, you know, hold on to songs like this one forever. When we're looking at any catalog, it's important to consider the actual content itself and who's behind it. And everything that you're describing is the strong foundation of a catalog. And that's what makes staying power, which is what really we're all looking for when considering royalty catalogs. We want the consistency. We want the longevity. All of that comes from a strong fan base and that consistent listenership. And the only way that that's indoctrinated into a person is through that nostalgia, through that deeper connection, that authenticity that you're talking about. That's where that all begins. And that's where we as investors get to capitalize on that artist's growth and their success through listings like the one we have on Royalty Exchange right now, which again, is like right at the peak of, hey, this is starting to settle. There's growth in the horizon. Let's take a closer look.